Good evening from First Baptist Natchez. My name is Chandler Key, and I want to welcome you to Wednesday Night Online. These are such unusual times, and we appreciate your encouraging words and prayer support as we seek to bring you Bible lessons and sermons using online technology. Also, thank you for continuing to support your church financially. If you need help in knowing how to give, information is posted on our church website, www.fbcnatches.org. I believe in God the Father, Jesus Christ, His only Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit, distinct yet three in one. I believe there is forgiveness for everything we've done. That is why all the more I will serve Him. I believe that Jesus was crucified and hung up on a tree. They laid him in a borrowed tomb, not far from Calvary. I believe that Jesus rose again, alive for all to see. That is why all the more I will serve him. I made my decision, I've staked my claim. I've drawn the line in the sand and I won't be ashamed with the world behind me and the cross before by the grace of God I will serve the Lord I believe you must be born again John 3 16 is true the old man can be washed away and everything made new. I believe the love of God will somehow find its way to you. That is why all the more I will serve him. I made my decision. I've staked my claim. I've drawn the line in the sand and I won't be ashamed with the world behind me and the cross before by the grace of God I will serve the Lord though Satan and his minions they come and try to torment me I can call the name of Jesus those demons have to flee. I know that Christ soon will return. He's going to take us all away. But until that day, there's only one name whereby men can be saved. I believe there is a right and wrong, a time to live and die. The Bible is the blueprint that everyone must live by. I believe I'm not alone today in my faith in Jesus Christ. That is why all the more I will serve Him. I, we've made our decision. We've staked we fall the light in the sand and we won't be ashamed with the world behind us and the cross before by the grace of God we will serve I have made my decision I'll stake my with the world behind me 
and the cross be for by the grace of God I will serve the Lord by the grace of God I will serve the Lord by the grace of God I will serve the Lord I will serve the Lord now Let's prepare our minds and hearts to hear God's message delivered by Brother Doug. Father, we thank you so much for technology that we're able to stay connected while we are all separated by this coronavirus. Lord, we pray that this message will speak to hearts and minds. God, that you will remove all distractions from us while we are not in our typical situation at church. Father, we do ask that you will speak to us and teach us through your word as you've promised to do so. I pray for Brother Doug that he will have a clear message and that you will be glorified through this time. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Welcome to Wednesday Worship at First Baptist Church Natchez. I don't know about you, but I am missing my church family. This is not the way we prefer to engage in worship. Our church is characterized by love. Simply stated, we enjoy being together. I'm reminded of a line from an old song. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. I'm eagerly awaiting the time when we can gather again. This will be an exciting time. Until that moment arrives, please continue to tune in through the various platforms on social media that we're able to utilize for worship. When you do so, please hit the share button so that we can reach as many people as possible. Your simple share may be responsible for some person hearing and responding to the gospel. We are continuing this evening in expository study of one of the most popular chapters found in the Old Testament. I'm referring to the 23rd Psalm. It would be difficult to identify any person who has attended Sunday school, vacation Bible school, or participated in a study of the sacred scriptures who is not familiar with the lines of this brief but beautiful psalm. Please don't be fooled by its familiarity. There are new lessons that God wants us to learn every time we take time to read and reflect upon the six verses that comprise this popular psalm. Try to picture David as he sits down to write these words God inspired him to record. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever." We began our study of this prominent passage by examining the first two words David penned in verse 1. Those words were, the Lord. David used the definite article, the, to make an important distinction. He was not speaking about a Lord, but rather the Lord. Now, this is not an isolated incident. There are scores of scriptures that make reference to the Lord or the God. While people who lived in polytheistic societies created many gods they chose to worship, there is in reality only one true and living God. He is the one who created us. He did so in order that we might know Him and then make Him known. Throughout this study, I've repeatedly made mention of the fact that although we don't worship gods made of wood, stone, and metal, far too many people do worship the gods of pleasure, profit, and prosperity. During this global pandemic, We've been reminded that these man-made gods are a poor substitute for the true and living God. We are no longer permitted to engage in many of the pursuits that bring us pleasure. Sporting events have been canceled. Some recreational venues have been closed. The gods of profit and prosperity have been exposed for their inadequacy. Many businesses have closed. 
People have been laid off. Sales have plummeted along with the stock market. Before this pandemic began, we took things like a roll of toilet paper and a loaf of bread for granted. While few Christians would have said so, let's be honest and admit that many of us live as if we were really not dependent on God. While David served as the king of Israel, there were moments in his life where he did not have sufficient supply of food for his men. As he went through all sorts of trying times, David learned where he should place his faith. He affirmed his source of security when he wrote, The Lord is my shepherd. David put his ego aside. He did not refer to the prestigious position he held. Instead, he lifted up the name of the Lord. He acknowledged that the Lord was his master, that God was large and in charge. Rather than requiring people to bow down before him, this was David's way of saying that he bowed down before the Lord. May we follow his example by realizing our dependence on the Lord and making him the object of our worship. In our second study session, we looked at the next three words David penned in verse 1. Those words are, is my shepherd. When he wrote, the Lord is my shepherd, David was indicating that he worshiped, the God he worshiped was a present tense God. What a blessing it is to know that God is with us, that God is for us, and God is in us. The next word David wrote is my. The Lord is my shepherd. The term my is a personal pronoun. He referred to him as my shepherd. As he looked back over the course of his life, David could recall multiple moments when the good shepherd had been present with him. He remembered those times when God had provided for his needs. He was also mindful of how God had protected him. When he wrote the words, is my shepherd, David was sharing his personal testimony. If you are asked to give your testimony, could you honestly say that the Lord is your shepherd? Are you really following his leadership or are you simply doing your own thing? Whose plans are you following? Do you truly seek the Lord's leadership in the decisions you make? Does Jesus have the wheel as you journey through life or are you the one who is really in the driver's seat? This evening I want us to explore the next phrase David penned in this psalm. That phrase is, I shall not want. An alternate translation of verse 1 might be, Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. We can spend an entire session focusing on the distinction between the words want and need. Suffice it to say that these terms are not synonyms. The truth is, we have very few real needs, but a lot of wants. If you go back to the beginning of human history, you'll find that the Lord has always met the needs of His people. He provided a ram caught in a bush for Abraham. He fed the Israelites with manna from heaven. And when they asked for meat, God sent quail. God sent ravens with bread and meat to meet the needs of the prophet Elijah. I love what the scripture says in Psalm 37, 25. I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. Listen to these lines Paul penned. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 19. Basic needs of life have typically been defined as food, water, shelter, and sleep. Sadly, such a list omits man's greatest need. That need is for a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Several years ago, recording artist Steve Green released a song entitled, People Need the Lord. Listen to these lyrics. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, He's the open door. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. When will we realize people need the Lord? My prayer during this global pandemic is that people around the globe will realize that they need the Lord and that Jesus is more than able to meet their need for salvation. And may those of us who are saved recognize that the Lord will meet every need in our lives. In the midst of uncertain times, we can be certain that the Lord will be present with us, that He will provide for our needs, and that His hand of protection will be over us. After all, the Lord is our shepherd. Bow with me, please. Father, we thank You that You are the Good Shepherd. We thank You that You're a present tense God, and that You're with us through every step of life's journey. Help us, Father, to turn to You when times get tough, and recognize that You are a faithful Father. Help us, Father, to share our own personal testimony of how you've been there with us, how you've provided for us, and how you've protected us. 
May this psalm, penned by your servant David many years ago, begin to resonate in our hearts and our minds. May we put into practice the basic theological truths we are learning about you. The Lord is our shepherd. Amen.